think often we get afraid of the emotional responses that art can bring. And we need to actually kind of understand that God is at work. God um, speaks through our emotions. Um, it's good to embrace the beauty and the joy that this world brings and receive it as a gift from God. Welcome to the FIEC podcast, Independence. My name is uh, Phil Topham. I am Executive Director of the FIEC. Uh, and we've invited back uh, Sophie Killingly. Hello, Sophie. Hi. Uh, Sophie, you're in Send, near Woking, uh, married to Pete, who's the pastor at Send Evangelical. Uh, you did a, a podcast with us previously uh, about how you're you're a mum to uh, two autistic children uh, yep. and how the church can think about how we, we welcome and cater for and care for uh, those who are autistic in our, our churches. But we've got you back today to talk about something a little bit different and um, Sophie if I might say your, your look makes you look like an artist ah crazy uh, is uh, is that what you are you are bang on the money uh, I am in fact an artist uh, and and they pay you for it yes I do get paid <laughs> Inc incredible stuff um your, your hair is that's not your natural color I, um, I want to say no you you're quite right with that it is not in fact I had it refreshed yesterday to look pop in for today uh, ready for the podcast exactly. oh I'm pleased about that <laughs> but we, we want... make an effort <laughs> so if we, we want to talk today uh, about Christianity and the arts uh, and just thinking about how those things go together, how historically perhaps they haven't, but how we'd mm. love to uh, to see that perhaps change and just start a conversation uh, about what it looks like for, for churches to, to kind of think about those who are creative, uh, people who are artistic, the arts perhaps a bit more holistically. So that, that's why we've got you here Fantastic. today. So first of all, just tell us a bit about your own artwork. What kind mm -hmm. of things do you produce? What, what, what do you work on? Um, well, I... Mostly work with text. So um, I kind of started my artwork journey um, because I had a really bad period of mental health. And I found that actually I was really struggling to read the Bible and mm. pray. And I found that actually what I could do was just um, doodle, create, um, just maybe just a few simple verses or a few truths. Mm. And that was actually something that was really beneficial to me. So I kept producing this work and then suddenly people wanted to buy it <laughs> so are these like bible verses or yeah, yeah bible yeah. verses um yeah bible verses um and or maybe quotes from like historic christian writers things that really resonated to me or provided me comfort in that time when i was really struggling and is it just text or do you i mean you, i've seen so, your work you embellish it obviously but what, yes. tell so us I what do, it looks like yeah i'm, I'm very um bold bright colors crazy um <laughs> In graphic, uh, in the way I produce my work, I tend to work largely digital, mm. um, but I also do cartooning as well. I quite like to do satirical cartoons. Um, when, when you say you work digitally, does that mean it's all on a, on a tablet? Or, yes, yeah. I tend to work um, using an iPad and Apple Pencil. Um, you know, I do create things on canvas and um, paper as well, but largely because it's just easier um, these days is to use an iPad and I used um, a program called procreate mm. see what they did there i did um so that yeah is a really great program where i can create things um digitally and it's yeah extremely um good intuitive program i, I don't think it's controversial mm. for me to say that that historically kind of the church and art particularly in our conservative evangelical circles it's mm. not gone hand in hand what no. why, why do you think that is um, we were talking a little bit about this earlier. I think, you know, there's a lot of reasons, but um, I think if you go back maybe to like the Enlightenment time, I think we spent a lot of time where reason and imagination were kind of pitted against each other. Mm. Um, and as uh, good evangelicals, we think we like to be very clear about what we believe. We like to have you know, clarity is almost of the most utmost importance. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's clarity absolutely, is no, no, important. Clarity yeah, yeah. is so important. But I think because um, as artists, we tend to kind of raise questions and maybe leave things out there for people to interpret, maybe causing some ambiguity. I think that evangelicals can be a little afraid of that, afraid of what might be put in the gaps. Whereas like artists, we tend to work within the gaps and raising the questions. So how do, how do we address that? Because that is a really important question. So some people will be suspicious, wouldn't mm. they, of that kind of lack of, of clarity that, that might appear in a, in a piece of art. Mm. How, how, can we, how can we help to bridge that gap? Um, I think it's to not be afraid of it. I think to trust in the sovereignty of God. 
I think so much of our um, our desire to be clear is is so great, but often I think it can come down to an element of wanting to really control what people are thinking. And it's important that we want to shape what people uh, are thinking and how they're interpreting the Bible. But we also have to trust that um, God is at work in people's lives and God will be using different things. And so sometimes, you know, an answer may not appear in the way that we would like to specifically word it to make sure we've caveated everything. Mm. Um, but God is still at work. So I think sometimes it's our own desire to control and make sure that things are absolutely understood in the way that we would absolutely say it. Um, and it's okay to kind of let um, questions be raised and people to engage where they are at, trusting that God is at work. So I think one of the ways that cashes out perhaps for church leaders is thinking about folk in their churches who are creative, mm. folk like yourself who are involved in the arts and not, obviously not just drawing, painting, artwork, mm. but also yeah. more widely perhaps with uh, with theatre or, or any any of the creative industries. Yeah. And um, what, what the churches need to be thinking about to help engage with folk who are following a profession like yours? Mm. I think... Um communicating with them, not being afraid. I think being interested. I think when I was growing up, um, I think a lot of the church circles I was, I, I was in, um, slightly um, anti-intellectual and also because there was a great emphasis on personal holiness in the churches I was in, there was a great fear of, um, I think, beauty and joy and emotions which would rise, which weren't necessarily, we couldn't control them very easily. And I think often we get afraid of the emotional responses that art can bring. And we need to actually kind of understand that God is at work. God um, speaks through our emotions. Um, it's good to embrace the beauty and the joy that this world brings and receive it as a gift from God. And so um, engaging with artists, hearing about what is it that makes them passionate about art? What is it that they're seeing? What is um, the beauty of it? There's a great um, William Blake quote, which I have written down, which is, um, um, I rest not from my great task to open the eternal worlds, to open the immortal eyes of man, um, inwards into the worlds of thought, into eternity, ever expanding in the bosom of God, the human imagination. Mm. And I think that so many artists um, who are artists, um, who are Christians, um, so much of what we do is showing truth, which is all pointing to the greater truth of Jesus. And so to engage with us, we might not be doing something explicitly Christian, but if we're believing that all beauty and all truth comes and points to the greater truth, which is Jesus in God, I think it can help take away some of that fear. So just engaging with artists about what it is they're working on, what they're thinking about it. That's that's one way in, isn't it? Yeah. I, I wonder if if I'm a, a pastor listening to this, I, I'm thinking, well, what, what would that look like in my church for sure. us to, to, be, to be more creative? Uh, and I think, you know, growing up in the, the kind of quasi charismatic circles I did, if, if somebody was talking about being, uh, you know, artistic or creative in worship, it meant a middle-aged woman running down the center aisle in barefoot, waving a flag. Yes. I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm on with board. a tambourine? Well, possibly. I'm not sure that's the future, what, what, yeah. what, but, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to engage with and help people to be creative in worship. What what could it look like? Mm. One way I've engaged with this with my church um, is to create, I've actually created a series of sermon notes um, mm. that people can engage with during the teaching time. I mean, for me, I find that I'm um, a learner that it, I'm, I suppose, a kinetic learner. So I, I find I can concentrate and take more in if my hands are busy. So I find doodling mm. or taking notes really helpful for me. And I think a lot of adults can be like that. So I've created these sermon notes, which have um, questions for people which should fit into most sermon things, like what does this passage say about Jesus? Mm. Um, how do you respond to this? Is it anything that changes your mind about um, what you thought before is it something you could share with people and a space for doodling? Um, so I've yeah that was created with your 
autistic children in mind. It wasn't was it? actually, yeah. but it's it's expanded, I think, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So um, I did create it um, originally because my daughter, who was twelve at the time, was um, leaving Sunday school and entering the church service, and I knew that she would need some structure. Uh, she wouldn't just sit there and listen, but she would find it easier to take in information if she had questions to be thinking on or working through. And, um, you know, a verse to look at, Um, because I usually do on the other side, I would do some kind of graphic text work of the kind of key verse for people to colour in. Mm. Um, And so that that really helped her. But then when um, when I started printing these, loads of adults took them as well. And they were like, oh, this is really helpful. I this is, oh, this is excellent. Can you keep doing this? So I did. Um, and that's actually become uh, the basis of a book as well. Which is incredible, really, because you just something you started out just to serve your own church has just kind of blossomed. Mm. But, but how wonderful that it's been taken on. So I think the Good Book Company are publishing something in yeah. August 2022. So what's yes. that going to be called? What, what's the kind of style of that? Yeah, so um, this is, it's um, a creative spiritual journal um, and it's called Draw Near. See what I did there? I see what you did. <laughs> so, called did, draw- you, did you come up with the title? <laughs> they did, actually. Okay, fine. Yeah. We were touring with various ideas, but uh, Draw Near, I was just absolutely, I love a pun. <laughs> so that that was great. That is high level punnery. Oh, I, definitely. I, like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was very pleased with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's a creative spiritual journal. And again, it's kind of aiming to kind of integrate uh, people's creativity with their spiritual life. Um I found so often when I was growing up that my kind of creative life, my everyday creative life, drawing, creating, making things, and my spiritual life were oddly separate. Mm. That I would kind of sit down, I'll do my Bible, I'll pray to God, shut that, now on to this. Yeah. Um, and it never occurred to me until I was having um, these mental health issues that actually my creativity and personality are all kind of God-given and I can incorporate that, I can worship God through kind of um, creating. So, um, And God is the great creator. Absolutely. As well. I mean, when you just look around, even in its fallen state, the beauty of the earth totally. that he's created, you just think this is incredible. And creation's not just functional, it's also beautiful. God didn't have to make nature is astoundingly beautiful as he did but he chose to um so yeah this this book is um basically trying to encourage people to incorporate kind of a creative response with it every day and i also want to encourage people that kind of grasping grappling with deep theological thought and creativity are not mutually exclusive they're not separate things it's not like oh well the guys can do heavy theological thinking over here and then you ladies can colour in in the corner, you know? <laughs> uh, please, can we not do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is like, this is for everybody. And I, I intentionally have made this, but unisex, because I want people, um, men and women, to be able to kind of start thinking creatively in their response um, to, uh, yeah, into response to God in their daily life. Um, uh, how, how do we get over that hump for blokes? Because I know what we're like <laughs> as blokes. We, we will sit, we will be, you know, buttoned down and, you know, it, yeah. inside it's all going on, but but outside we're, we're, we're not really re- yeah. reflecting how we're feeling. Totally. Um, I think just, I'm seeing more guys wanting to at least start to write things down, journal. So in my book, it's not all kind of like create an artwork it's actually lots of it is space, um, blocked space out for you to be able to write down what are you reading right now? What are you, what's happening in your life? And to kind of, so it's not a scary thing to kind of go, oh no, I've suddenly mm. got to go from zero to creating an artwork. Mm. Um, so it's, yeah, I've got a lot of space for people just to put their own thoughts down and to kind of write their prayer requests down. And then in the next week to write their prayer answers down to make sure that we're giving thanks for what we're praying for. And I might have a suggestion the week after on how you might be able to kind of um, think creatively about um, what you're reading. Um, so some yeah. of that's a good discipline anyway, isn't it? It's, it's good to write down what we've been praying about and then we can look back and see how the Lord's been at work through the things Absolutely. that we've been praying through. Yeah. So the kind of aim is to really um, help people develop like really great spiritual habits, um, but in a kind of holistic way, I guess. So yeah, we do have the, um, these empty spaces in like the weekly sections for people to muse and think about what they're reading and to their conversations with the Lord. But then also for each month of the year, I've done like some scriptural like Bible study 
um, with a creative prompt each mm. month. So each day you kind of think of your own things and then uh, each month you've, you can work through a little passage of scripture and creatively respond to that. So it's not just about the week to week stuff you're hearing at church on a Sunday. It's about your everyday walk with the Lord Jesus and mm. thinking about how to express some of that and, uh, and and to take notes from the stuff you're reading and be encouraged by. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. That sounds excellent. So it's out in August. It's out in August. Yeah. And um, you want men and women to engage with it and buy it. Absolutely. I stipulated, I mean, they let me design the front cover, but I was like, no florals and no pink. Thanks. Okay. So it's, it's looking unisex and. What does, what does it look like? Can you describe it to us? We'll put a link in the bottom. (laughs) It looks great because it's kind of like a kind of a cardboardy scrapbooky kind of look, Mm. um, but with some like blues and kind of uh, yellow paint bits lodged on it. It looks like the kind of book that you can mess up a little bit, which is what I wanted. I didn't want people to think it's too pristine and too beautiful to ever write my thoughts in it. It looks like it wants... It wants you to engage. So, so, so my kind of daily pattern is I've got a wide margin Bible. I will read it. I will, mm. I will take notes in the margin and highlight things that, mm. um, you know, I've particularly been picking up. Is a similar idea to that, but just transposed away from the wide margin Bible? Yeah, a little bit, pretty much. Um, because, you know, I have the weekly section, but I've also got a sermon note section, which is based on the sermon notes I produce to help people creatively start thinking about their engagement with God. And one thing I wanted this book to be is that often we will have a bit of scrap paper where we've noted down what the sermon was about. And then you find it months later, crumbled up, unrecognisable mm. in your bag with biscuit crumbs on it. And you're like, <laughs> oh no. Um, so it's kind of trying to bring everything all together so you have this one book which you could have take around with you um and so you can um uh yeah you can um, do your sermon notes on it you can do your weekly kind of musing on it you can look at the scriptures for each month which i'm going through and fantastic yeah. well uh, that will be available from the good book company um i think it might be out uh in a couple of weeks after this is published, I think. So we look forward to uh, that and we'll put a link uh, in, in the margin to it. Awesome. Um, let's talk just historically for a minute uh, yeah. about kind of church and art. Um, so I was in Belgium about 10 years ago mm-hmm. and it was fascinating to go and view the work of the Flemish primitives precisely because the work of the Flemish primitives was mm-hmm. to essentially teach the Bible to people who couldn't read it. Mm-hmm. So you had all these fantastic canvases that were basically depicting Bible stories. And as somebody who knows his Bible, I was really drinking this in, thinking how wonderfully this de- depicted it. And we've got to bear in mind, haven't we, that not everyone's going to be uh, able to read and write to a particular level mm-hmm. in our, our churches. Sometimes there'll be people who would want to engage at a, a, a kind of a, a pictorial mm. level. And what can we learn from that for our, our own kind of settings? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because these are the kind of things I have been grappling with as I've been producing resources for our church. Um, because I always make sure that on the one side, we do have like a big piece of kind of colouring almost um, of the key verse. So for people who can't engage necessarily with the questions, um, they have something to at least focus on. They have just one piece of truth to look at and engage with creatively. Um, so that kind of, yeah, helps. And a lot of the questions that we're using with our resources, again, are kind of generic enough that they will be able to kind of um, be suitable for any kind of age range and ability. And they can kind of um, meet, uh, they'll meet the person where they are. So with the question, like, what does this passage teach us about Jesus? For somebody who's um, really able to, they can like see that whole meta narrative in scripture and trace the salvation arc and look at, you know, precursors to, to Christ. Yeah. But for other, for other people or children who are less able to, they can just give a simpler answer. This tells us this about Jesus, or this reminds me of this, you know, so mm. it's like trying to kind of, yeah, the resources I produced help. What have you seen in kind of the art world that helps us to think, of, you know, a, a picture um, p- uh, paints a thousand words or whatever, mm. whatever the phrase is. Sorry, I probably got that wrong. But but what, what have you seen that, that's helped you really think think that through where a, a picture or a piece of art has actually just really helped you to engage uh, with, with the Lord in a, in a particular way? Oh man, that's a huge question. Can I tell you mine? Yeah, So please. so So mine, again, this is back to this, this trip to Belgium, but it's a, yeah. this picture of um, essentially the, the, the fires of hell as, yeah. as the Bible depicts in, in, so, in so many ways and people just walking 
uh, mm. towards the fiery pit and others who I guess were depicting evangelists, just trying to hold them uh, out of the pit. Mm. It, it felt like the work of the gospel right there. We want to share the good news of the Lord mm. Jesus to stop people um, going going in that direction. I just found that so powerful, mm. but really it's just depicting loads of scriptures which, which would which would say the, the same things. Yeah. So I have absolutely two things to say. Um, one is I definitely have some pictures in mind. Recently came back from a trip to DC, mm. uh, a really powerful uh, set of four pictures. Uh, also, I think it's worth coming back to in a bit about um, what Christians are expecting from art as well. And mm. are we expecting it to be an absolute um, gospel narrative, which is obvious to us, or can it be other things? Mm. Um, and like, what is that? Yeah, what are we expecting from art? Because mm. uh, I think sometimes artists and um, non-artist expectations of what art is can be quite different yeah. and therein lies some of the issues. Um, but going back to the pictures, uh, just came back from um, a trip to Washington, D.C. and I went to the National Gallery. Now, I am all about like Impressionists and Van Gogh and I was loving it. My husband, bless his heart, was like, well, this is lovely, but it doesn't really do it for me. So I'm going to go to the cafe. So It's not a picture of a tiger or something <laughs> that I can do work out. Okay. So, but I was wandering around and I found a set of pictures which I knew he was going to love because they were epic, massive in scale, uh, really beautiful. And they were by Thomas Cole and it was called um, A Voyage of Life. Um, and there were four separate pictures and it starts off, they're really massive landscape and it starts off with um, a baby in a boat um, heading downstream and it has like an angelic kind of figure behind the baby and it's kind of depicting the arrival of a soul, a human into the world and they're traveling down this stream. Um, you see this angelic figure guiding them. They don't, they aren't aware of its presence at that point. And then it goes on to the next picture, which is uh, showing like the the kind of ecstasy of youth. So you have, mm. they're entering like this wider stream. They've got kind of castles uh, like in the sky and it's showing kind of youthful dreams mm. uh, as they travel in. And then you've got the next picture, which is manhood, which is like despair. That's <laughs> 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 so like idealism is taken away and he's in a really rough kind of patch of water, mm. um, looking despairing. There's, you know, there's a lot of like pressures on him. Mm. And then the final massive picture is like this final voyage of old age into death and for the first time the angelic messenger or the person um is is depicted in front of them leading them mm. into eternal life and you kind of see how like god has been there this entire time and um yeah and this final they're being guided into heaven it was really powerful and really beautiful and kind of how we go through these trials of life and sometimes we may not see god or sense his presence but he is always there and it was like a a really beautiful thing so my husband really enjoyed that so um, so let's take that as an example there yeah. so people might say well that that doesn't tell me the gospel that doesn't tell me about the death, resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and, and how important it is for me to <laughs> to turn from sin and and put, and put my trust in him and um, so, so people might have that mm. criticism um, of, of art. So how, how do we engage with that and, and, and help us to, to think that through? Mm. Well, I think, again, it's um, what are you expecting art to do? I mean, uh, you also don't get that information from uh, sunflowers, but, you know, God has created them. Um, <laughs> True. Yep. And they are beautiful and they are they do point to something about his um greatness as uh, a creator and his beauty. Um but they don't tell the full picture. I think um so often I think we can be in a rush to um want to kind of present the gospel in its entirety um to someone just to make sure they've got the whole thing. Mm. Um whereas actually you know, there's statistics about um, in this kind of post-Christian age, how many different encounters it takes for somebody to kind of um, start thinking about uh, what the claims of Jesus are and they're going to meet various Christians. And I think like we should see art in that sense. That's it was one way of engaging the senses, one way of engaging the thoughts. Um, so yeah. so I haven't quite thought about that. So, so actually from an evangelistic perspective, mm. this is a could be a great way in for a group of people who perhaps we've not been as strong at, at, at reaching out to. Absolutely. So I think artists, um, I think, um, are what the artist um, Makoto Fujimara, who's a, a Japanese Christian artist, he talks of artists as being border stalkers or border wanderers. So we kind of inhabit some of the uncomfortable spaces um, 
but we're often reaching people um, who wouldn't ordinarily be reached because we often tend to ask the big questions and the ex- existential questions and try trying to pick them or how we feel about them in our artwork. And that can often be an entry point for somebody, you know, to see, oh, okay, so Christians are you are thinking about these things. You have these these worries, these doubts, these fears as the same as I do. Um, so how do you go, you know, it's it's an entry point of how do you then go and deal with that? So how how could churches engage in evangelism with that that kind of thing i mean what have mm. you what have you done at send for example or or, or what would you love to do mm. uh, as part of our kind of our kind of mission and evangelism yeah absolutely again it will depend on where you are situated of course um and say so what kind of um congregation and wider kind of societal areas you find yourself in um so for our village um as much as I would love to put on a big gallery show. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know, um, most people are not really interested in the kind of the big existential uh, questions or the provocative kind of stuff um, that I'd want to kind of, you know, provoke. It just wouldn't be suitable. Um, But a lot of people find um, kind of... uh, kind of crafts and things like that a lot more helpful. Um, And that is okay as well. Um, So... It's just about trying to see, you know, what is the best setting for what you're doing. I mean, like, um, yeah. So I, I think for us, um, I've been involved in the Mark drama. So that's a mm. different type of art, isn't yeah. it? But 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 actually, that was a. I found that a really easy invite. Come and see mm. a piece of theatre. And um, but actually, what you're doing there is you're presenting the entirety of Mark's gospel mm. um, to to the people who come along who've perhaps never engaged with the Bible before. But it's been done in a in a particularly creative way. And I, I found that a really easy invite. Uh, and it was it was quite a lot for the church to put on. And we actually mm. we we partnered with other churches to to do that, that's which I think great. is which is vital yeah. if you're able to do that. Um, um, so you're not taking it all on yourself, but there, there are there are creative things out there that churches can engage with mm. in terms of that mission and evangelism. Absolutely, yeah, um, yeah, and I think um, for pastors to be, um, you know, encouraging the creatives in their churches to um, be engaging with the people that they come across in their fields, um, you know, like Jesus is for everybody, um, and. I often am meeting so many interesting people as an artist and in in my work that I've done. Um, And it's opened up so many conversations because I feel utterly at ease to be able to talk about my art and my faith. I mean, not all of my art is faith based in in the sense that it's not a gospel presentation. Mm. However, because I'm to the like by the grace of god i'm trying to live a life which is integrated in sense of like my creativity and my faith being interwoven i'm really at ease with talking about um what i'm wrestling with what the questions i'm having so the people i meet in my art i'm I'm just very open about that and that often uh, is surprising to them i think because often i think within art circles uh, perhaps being a christian could be seen as like intellectual suicide or Mm or just not compatible but actually to see a christian who is serious about jesus and the bible but still really serious about art and the questions it raises and the spaces it inhabits uh, is like it's i think it's very interesting to a lot of people who aren't of faith so we've got to come bring this into land we're running out of time just before we do and let me ask you as somebody who's a creative who's an artist Mm. what kind of things would you love to see churches doing sunday by sunday or even week to week prayer meetings, other activities yeah. that would just help to engage those who are of a more kind of creative style, if you like, yeah. or that, that's their background, or even in your case, their profession. I think um, creating space for it. So pastors, if there are creatives in your church, um, just asking them, what would you what would you like? What would be helpful? Um, you know, I kind of try and model that as much as I can for my church whenever my husband is preaching I am sat there everyone can see with my notebook and all my watercolor pens sometimes I even have a little brush right (laughs) yeah yeah and I'm literally painting and writing as he's preaching because I want to signal it's okay to engage with this in a creative way you don't have to just sit and bible and that's it um so trying to model that um yeah I really have enjoyed it when um on occasion uh like for a, a prayer meeting that we will have like maybe space for people to write their prayers down or one time we had um just like a little uh 
there was like a decorative tree in the corner. This is for a ladies event, but we were able to write our prayers down and fold them up and then just kind of like place them on the tree just as a kind of a symbolic way of just placing our prayers before the Lord. And to some people that was really helpful. Others didn't really dig that and that's absolutely fine. Um, But it was just really, um, yeah, interesting just to be able to ask creatives what would be helpful, what can we do? And just finally, what what kind of resources other than your book that's coming out, obviously, <laughs> uh, your website is Perish and Fades. Yeah, perishandfade.com. So if you want to check out Sophie's work, that's where you need to go. Are there any other and kind Instagram of... Instagram as well. Uh, of course. Sorry, I, I think you said earlier you live on Instagram. I do. Uh, yeah, basically. Uh, any other kind of resources we can point people to just to help them think about, about this kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I find the work of The Rabbit Room extremely helpful. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Christian singer-songwriter and writer... Uh, and uh, children's book writer, Andrew Peterson. Oh, I know um, the name. Yes. yes. Yep. Um, so he has kind of um, formed with his brother um, a kind of a forum online called The Rabbit Room. It's based on the friendship that C.S. Lewis and Tolkien had mm. um, together. And they used to sit in the rabbit room of the Eagle and Child pub and they'd read each other parts of their work and encourage each other with their faith and their so what they are trying to create there is a space for Christians who are really passionate about the arts in all its different forms, but also with grappling with their questions of um, faith and how to integrate that. Um, so they, they they provide a lot of um, uh, essays for people to read. There's often a lot of kind of um, pointers towards Christian artists doing their thing um, and who you might not have heard of before. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a really encouraging place I've found um, to kind of go and find that there are other Christians out there who are serious about the Bible and serious about their creativity. I think I'm right in saying the Keswick Convention have done a week for yes. artists, haven't they? Oh, I need to. Yes, absolutely. The third week, I yeah. believe, unconventional. Yeah. Yes. Um, that is a, a great, I've not been, but I have so many friends who are involved in that. Um, and that is a great place to go. Um, the third week of Keswick to kind of engage with Christians in the arts and so many different um, things going on, songwriters and artists and writers. Yeah. Sophie, another fascinating conversation. Thanks for helping us to think through these things uh, so creatively and wisely. And we are delighted that you've been able to join us uh, on the podcast. So this has been Independence. Uh, Do rate and review uh, and we'll see you again soon. God bless. Okay.